Game 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Republican Representative Rick Gundram of Slinger was elected in a January special election seeking a full term in the 58th Assembly District. Rick, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you've been in the Capitol long enough to learn the rope, so my question, mm -hmm. if you're reelected, what's your top goal, top priority for the next session? Um, I have several. One of them is to close the dark store uh, loophole. Okay. Uh, I'm very excited and happy to be part of the Legislative Study Committee on that issue and that topic. And um, I think uh, based on what was presented uh, at the last session, those two sets of bills um, um, are, are right on and I think you know we've got something great to build from and, and go from there. Also, um, um, local control at the uh, school levels, I want to make sure that that stays. Um, and uh, school choice. Uh, education is very, very important for workforce development, development which is also uh, a key thing to be focused on. You think choice should, should expand further? It's been expanded fairly significant, significantly. Do you think you want to hold it there or do you want to expand um, it even further? Uh, if, if we can uh, continue to find ways to do that, I, I think yes, definitely. As a former local official, mm -hmm. levy limits have been around 13, 14 years. Correct. Um, you've dealt with them yes. in your <laughs> yep. previous public service. Sure. Time to uh, keep them to control property taxes, loosen them, or get rid of them? Uh, definitely not get rid of them. Um, I uh, would support looking at options of maybe uh, reforming some of the, uh, re re uh, revising some of the formulas, maybe um, using uh, sort of uh, an incentive for those uh, and, and a reward for those communities and municipalities that, um, that are very... Um, cost conscious and, and operate uh, very efficiently mm -hmm. um, where they can maybe get a little bit of a lift over a, you know, a s certain period of time uh, as opposed to others who, um, I'm going to call it arti artificially, raise the limit by borrowing so that gets their limit up okay. uh, a little bit and gives them more, more wiggle room. Um, so th those types of things. But again, that's open for discussion and debate. <laughs> you're, um, you're new to the Capitol, so you've witness now the continuing impasse, the gridlock on how we pay for highway funding mm -hmm. in the future? Yes. Um, <laughs> how would you like to see, us, what solution would, would, would you favor? Well, I, I don't find it in an increase in the gas tax, a wheel tax, or a, um, a uh, toll road. Um, you know, with the way the current levy limits and that structure is set up, um, municipalities can borrow um, you know, to, to cover expenses in that community uh, if, if need be. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that doesn't have to be the first option. But I, I think there are other ways to come up with, um, with funding streams uh, to put back into local roads. For instance, uh, road projects on the state level, um, they can be um, time condensed or whatever. I think the projects take way too long because uh, federal and, and state level uh, now, there's all these bureaucracies, these you know layers that uh, I think can be, some of them can be, if not all, be peeled back so that we can shorten the length of, of uh, concept to completion on projects, saving money, putting that money back in. Um, also with uh, the repe uh, repeal of uh, prevailing wage, um, we're seeing at the local level at least uh, bids coming in lower than uh, what were expected. So there's extra money there to be used. As um, the mega projects, the borrowings get paid off, that will free up some money. So I think there's other ways to, uh, to address that. Um, and as a very, very, very last resort, we would look at adding more taxes. Okay. Let's talk about health care. Um, thoughts on how we protect and maybe expand health care in rural Wisconsin? Yes. Um, well, I, I'm open to that discussion. That's, uh, I'm still kind of new to the les legislature, but I, I definitely see where that area does need to be addressed. Um, you know, we, we need to be able to provide across the state, uh, you know, affordable coverages and things like that. Um, I think some of the initiatives that are in place now and that have, have been talked about and proposed uh, such as like uh, direct primary care, 
those are, are good innovative uh, cost saving measures that uh, could also help um, you know the rural areas as well and I think too as uh, the economy continues to grow jobs grow people will more more and more people will be uh, residing in the rural areas and they will need the, the, those services and I think some of the private sector uh, partners probably might even step up to the plate and come in and, and uh, provide services are you hearing from hospitals and medical providers in your district that Wisconsin's Medicaid reimbursement rates are too low and are you, uh, are they saying we're at a tipping point in terms of the future of providing quality Medicaid services there with, with, with the current rates? There is concern in, in, in that regard um, and again that's something that I need to even take a closer look at and see what we can do to, to, um, to uh, help that area. Uh, I, I understand that costs go up, and uh, but I don't have the full background on exactly what what's being addressed and how it's being treated. So. Since you just joined the assembly, are you aware of this pilot program with state government and Delta Dental mm -hmm. that provides dental care to low income yes. with some regional clinics? Yep. Should that remain a priority in the next MA budget? Um, I think so. Yes. Um, everything is worth. Uh, taking a look at, and uh, if we can expand on that, definitely should. And are you hearing from caregivers that there might be issues there? AARP says there are 578,000 Wisconsin residents who provide care for family members or a neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, would you support laws or rules that require hospitals to recognize and work with family caregivers when a loved one is hospitalized? Has this issue come up either in your special election or now? Um, uh, not uh, in the special election, and um, uh, my office has received some some concerns, you know. Um, but uh, I was uh, the caregiver for my my mother, who lived to be in her 90s, and I did not see uh, any issue there. I mean, I worked with the providers on on things okay. uh, through um, the ADRC and through the uh, uh, care providers, and. Um, so again, something that should be looked at probably, but I, I don't see you know, that being a problem right now. The, you missed the vote on the tax breaks and tax benefits for Foxconn. Yes. You, weren't, you weren't in the assembly then. Correct. Foxconn, uh, the breaks given them has, uh, one of the reasons that Kimberly Clark wants similar mm. tax breaks, tax mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. Larger question, when should state government come offer these tax breaks to private companies? I think it needs to be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis and viewed because uh, every situation has its own components and if it's about uh, retaining jobs uh, definitely that would be something to really consider um, but uh, I don't think you can have a blanket formula uh, one size fits all for it, everything would need to be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. And because it involved retaining jobs, that's why you on April 22nd voted for the Kimberly Clark mm, package? That is correct, yes. Okay. And I don't know if I would do that for another scenario, a uh, different scenario for another company. Again, it would, it would have to depend on, on this in the situation. The current state budget provided more than $600 million more in K-12 aid, mm -hmm. Uh, state aid to our public schools. Correct. When local educational superintendents or principals say, thank you, we need another big increase mm -hmm. in the next budget, sure. do you think we do? Well, I, I think we need to invest in our future and uh, kids, children that are attending school are part of that future, that are going to be part of the workforce that, are, uh, that uh, is going to drive our economy. Economic development is, is the key to bringing in more revenue without raising taxes. And um, so, yes, I believe that. But not just for, for public schools. It needs to be for all, uh, you know, all levels of K-12 education and all levels of education for continuing education, your technical colleges, uh, universities. When you talk about universities, the should we continue the freeze on resident undergrad tuition for the UW system? I think so. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, interesting. I, I, I did a little uh, research on my own. Found that um, uh, for six years we've been freezing the tuition, and it, it's, it adds to affordable, um, you know, costs to continuing edu education for the uh, for the uh, the students. But uh, the faculty and staff were able to get a four percent uh, pay increase this year. So hmm. the debate 
coming next session over whether we need a new state prison. Two of our prisons were built in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a debate over whether we sh could reduce prison population. Mm -hmm. Do you think we need a new state prison? Well, um, I, I haven't looked that uh, closely to it yet. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of it. Um, I understand uh, St. Norbert's University has done a study on the Green Bay facility and uh, early indications, I haven't seen the report yet, I don't think it's been released, but some of the early indications is that it's showing some positive uh, feedback on, uh, on uh, rebuilding the prison, you know, uh, but I, I won't know exactly until I see, and, and, but it's supposed to be very cost effective, uh, makes things managed more efficiently, that type of thing. Um, but um, as far as reducing the prison population uh, from uh, d down to 50 percent, I, I don't think that's a, a good call. I mean, because if you look, there's like 65 percent of the prison population are considered uh, very uh, hardened criminals, and you don't want to put 15 percent of those people back on the streets. So the hundred million that was set aside for school safety grants, that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, is that enough or do we need to change gun laws, Rick? Um, I think school safety is always going to be an issue that we need to be concerned about. Um, it's uh, something that no matter how safe you make something, an individual or individuals will find a way to get around it and, and create havoc again. So uh, I think we still need to address that. Uh, we need to dr address the mental health issues in schools as well uh, with students and counselors and, and educating parents uh, about the potential situations that could occur. So if they hear a rumor from one of their uh, children that somebody in school is, is um, talking about creating a bomb or something, it needs to be taken seriously and, and looked at. It. You know, it doesn't mean you have to incarcerate the individual right away just for, you know, because sometimes people will say things off the cuff in, in, in jest, but it needs to be taken seriously and, and, and law enforcement needs to be made aware of that as well through the, through the school uh, administration, things like that. The bills in the Capitol that would legalize both recreational and medical marijuana, your, your positions? Um, I'm, I'm not uh, behind the uh, uh, legalizing marijuana for uh, recreational purposes because uh, from what I've seen looking at what has happened in the states that have already legalized it, it you still have all the social ills um, and I'm not so sure that the opioid uh, issue has been addressed by having legalized marijuana, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not convinced. Um, and also, I'm, I'm not convinced uh, that it's uh, the, um, the big uh, silver bullet for uh, uh, road and infrastructure repairs, uh, again, because of the social ills that come with it. Uh, for medical uh, marijuana, I'd be open to uh, discussing that further and looking into it more. But right now, the American Medical Association and the FDA uh, do not uh, you know, approve it. It's not endorsed. And also, it's still uh, uh, an illegal substance at the federal level. And so until that gets addressed, um, I'm not uh, willing to take a stand one way or the other. Then last question, differences between you and your Democratic opponent on November 6th? Sure. Um, well, uh, again, I'm a Republican, conservative, and he's a Democrat. Uh, he uh, has a lot of, uh, you know, wants to fund the schools and everything, like, and better roads, things like that, but wants to do it by raising taxes. Um, I um, have a proven track record by serving on the county board for 12 years and as, as uh, county board chairman of uh, b finding efficient, effective ways uh, to address uh, funding shortfalls without raising taxes and without um, uh, you know, affecting negatively in impacting uh, core services. Um, we used a thing called priority-based budgeting under my watch, and that really uh, brought out uh, some weaknesses uh, in areas that we were underfunding and areas that we were overfunding, um, services that we didn't need to provide, services that we definitely needed to provide. Saved hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, dollar, hundreds of thousands of dollars right off the bat. Um, uh, I uh, was a strong proponent of merging our health uh, board of health with Ozaukee County. Um, save the taxpayers $250,000 a year, uh, increase the level of service. It is now a level three health department. That's the highest rating you can get. It gets national recognition. It is now a role model for other states and counties uh, to follow. Uh, it's been very efficient. Um, um, our um, 
on-site medical clinic took place while I was uh, chairman of the county board, uh, saving a million dollars over the first three years, uh, and that is just partnering with the city of West Bend. Uh, they are members of, of, uh, of the health clinic, and it, uh, others are looking at coming on too, as well as you know other uh, school boards inside the county and uh, other municipalities, because there's great cost savings there for health care. Republican Representative Rick Gundam of Slinger was elected in the January special election. He's seeking a full term in the 58th Assembly District on November 6th. Rick, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. You bet. My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.